Okay, hello everyone and welcome back. Um, we're going to continue our um, bathroom tutorial series here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change to layout mode and I'm going to hit Alt-H to bring everything back into our scene. Um, so you can see how our scene's really coming along here. Um, and we haven't really used up too much um, in terms of geometry. If you look down at the bottom right, you can see the scene's total um, vertices and faces. And 14,000 is actually really good for a scene. And I mean, although our scene isn't very complicated, um, it still it's, it looks pretty cool, you know. Um, so for today, I'm not 100% sure what I want to work on. Um, I think what we should do is add some realistic lighting to our scene. So, so far we've just been using this boring old sun lamp, which does its job, but it's just like a constant light. It doesn't have much variety to it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use an HDRI. And basically what that is, it's a high definition, um, I don't, I think it's high dynamic range. Um, the I, I'm not too sure what that stands for, but basically it's a picture that is a 360 degree picture and it was taken at different exposure levels to capture all the fine and subtle detail. Um, so I'm going to get one um, ready for us and then we'll, I'll show you how to actually put it in our scene. Okay, so I was able to find an HDRI and if you ever want to um, look at free HDRIs, there's a great website called HDRI Haven. Um, these are all 100% free 360 degree pictures and you can get a sample of what they look like by uh, just clicking on one that you're interested in. And all these views are actually, I believe, rendered in Blender or Maya or something. So you can kind of see how cool those reflections are going to look once we actually put it in our scene. Um, you can also get a 360 degree preview on their website. So it's a very cool website and I believe it's all run by one guy and he has a Patreon for you to donate to. So very cool, but anyways, so what we're doing for this video is we want to add 360 degree pictures to our scene. Um, so I'm going to start out by deleting this sun that we've had so far. Um, and it's pretty easy to add these pictures actually. Um, all we have to do is go to scene and then we um, click, or wait, sorry, not scene. Let me double check here. We go to world, yes, world right here with the picture of the globe on it. And what we want to do is we want to add a new um, texture basically. Um, so what we're going to do here is you can see we can change the color of our world but we don't want to just change the color we want to add a texture to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little dot right here and I'm going to click on environment texture and this is going to allow us to just add in the texture. So all we have to do is click open. I'm going to go to my downloads folder and I'm going to add let me double check what it's called. Yeah something sunrise. Spirit Sunrise, I guess. That looks good. So we're going to open image. Um, and nothing changes. But that's because that it only changes in our actual, uh, when we're in rendered mode. So I'm going to select just the house and hit Shift H to get rid of all the extra geometry that might slow down the render. I'm going to click on render view. And you can see here's our picture. So if I move around, you can see it's actually casting that um, dynamic light based off the actual image. Um, so it's very, very cool. And if we go to camera view, we can see what it'll look like um, actually through the uh, camera. Uh, so I'm going to zoom out a bit. I'm going to change to uh, rendered view still. Um, so yeah, so I'm actually using a 2K texture right now, and I might have to raise get a more high quality one. Um, I wanted to start out with a smaller one, though, because it can slow down your computer a bit, um, you know, in terms of render time and such. But uh, I think in this case, um, we can benefit greatly from it. Um, so yeah, kind of double check and look through here. Yeah, so I'm going to actually come back with a higher quality texture, and then we're going to continue along. OK, so I've come back with a much bigger one. This is an 8K version of that same picture. So first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save, and we're going to see how this affects my uh, my uh, Blender client. So switching into rendered view takes a little bit longer to load it. Um, and that looks fine. You can see we have a lot more detail in it. Um, if we look through the, what the camera is going to see, um, we can see a bit more detail in the background. So I think that looks that's going to look great. Um, and you can see we get a lot more in terms of reflection from our scene. So all around I think this is going to look great. Um, we might have to mess with um, exposure and stuff a bit later because of, you know, how a camera would realistically see a scene. But anyways, I'm going to hit Alt-H and bring everything back, and then Alt-A to deselect everything. And I think this is looking pretty good. 
Um, in terms of adding more things to the scene, um, I think we're pretty much golden uh, now that we have our cool HDRI. So I think what I'm going to do is, since this video is a bit shorter, um, I'm going to cover a bit more about HDRIs real quick. And then we're going to end it, and in the next one we're going to try to render a final image to see what it'll look like. Um, and in the future, if this um, series picks up some traction, I'll probably come back and add some more to the scene, such as cloth simulations and whatnot. So, what we're going to do is I'm just going to go back into render view, and it's going to take a second again to load in that 360 degree picture. Um, we're going to give it a sec. Okay, here we go. And just to kind of show you how an HDRI works is... Um, so we're going to look over off into the sun, and you can see how it's really bright, but the cool thing is we can lower the strength of it. So while in this world panel, you can see we have a strength value underneath our um, texture here. And if I lower this down, it might lag a bit. We'll give it a second. I think it's loading. Yeah. So at zero, it's obviously invisible, but we can change it to 0.3. We'll see how that looks, and we'll give it a second. Um, because it's 8K, it'll take a while to load in. But you can see we can actually lower the texture and get a bit more detail. You can actually see the outline of the sun here. So I'm going to change it down to 0.1. Then we'll give it a second to load. You can kind of see how it's... Yep. So you can see we're, we can actually see the, the, uh, the trees in the background and the outline of the sun and the power line. So just kind of keep this image in your head while I change it back. So this is at 0.1, and if I set it to its default value of 1, um, watch as everything kind of gets too too bright. See how all that detail disappears? So that's where you, that's where HDRIs are so amazing because they give better lighting quality and also you can recover some of that detail so it doesn't look unrealistic. It doesn't look like you just made a normal picture look dimmer. It's very, um, it just looks very good, you know. Um, and another thing is we could actually rotate this um, scene in a bit. Um, so if I don't like the look of the final render, we can rotate the 360 degree picture and um, actually like show the, the tree over there, the logs, and I'll show you how to do that real quick. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, we'll try shading. No, that's not going to work. We're going to go back to layout and let this load in. So I'm going to mess out my, uh, I'm going to mess out, mess up the uh, layout for me real quick. So I'm going to click on this time uh, timeline real quick. I'm going to change it to, I think, shading editor. Is this what we want? I believe so. Um, and we want to uh, switch it to world editing. So you can see here, this is actually our 8K um, sunrise, um, sunrise picture. So, and again, I just went to shading editor. I changed my timeline to a shading editor. And then I went from uh, object uh, shading to world shading. So here we can edit the nodes of our world. Um, so let me see if I can remember how to do this. So I'm going to need um, UV, um, what's it called? Um, we're going to need texture mapping. Um, and this is similar, if you remember, to the, uh, to the object, um, the node wrangler setup. It gives us something where we can mess with the scale and rotation. Um, basically, we're just adding one of those nodes, and we also need um, gener. What is it? Um, object info, I believe. Um, maybe not object info. Let's see if we can find it. Um, vector um, layout, maybe. Input Texture coordinate, that's what we need, I believe. So I will try to generate it real quick and see if that breaks anything. If we change the rotation a bit. It's updating the lighting. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna set that back to normal. I believe we just I believe I found the right one. I'll just double check real quick. Oh, I didn't connect. Okay, that's why. Um, we're going to switch it back to generated, and then we need to make sure we connect the actual vector to the texture in question. So now we'll see what this looks like. Okay, so it's not generated. Um, is it object? It's not object. Is it UV? No. Um, normal. 
if we change this to texture and try generating. That's a start, maybe vector. That's looking right. I'm going to go double check on this real quick. So this video has been going on for quite a while. So, and I also accidentally paused the recording. So we're going to cut the video short here. And in the next video, we're going to actually render out um, the final image. Um, so yeah, it's going to be really cool. So thanks for watching. Please leave any thoughts and comments down below. Um, and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching.